The first step in the preparation of silige is the fabrication of ceramic slabs. A number of workshops dot the hillsides around the city of Fez. Traditional methods are still practiced here. The slabs are prepared by hand with clay extracted from the surrounding area. Only the enamel is imported. The ceramics are fired near the workshop. used is made from olive press waste, pits and olive pulp. As it burns, it the air with its strong aroma and a thick black smoke that somehow does not seem to pollute. Ceramic tiles are sent to the different Zilege workshops. The craftsmen come out into the courtyard several times a day in their ads. The blades are razor sharp. The Zilege workshop is equipped with a floor where an ironsmith continuously fashions new tools. Forms of traditional craftsmanship are taught and perpetuated in Morocco, and yet we help but notice a certain form of degeneration. The Zilige motifs of ancient monuments like the Alhambra in Grenada stand as material proof of the slow evolution and deepened understanding of shapes guided ritual inspiration. Today it is obvious that skilled craftsmanship has become more important than the spiritual meaning in the designs. The pieces have become minuscule, and although most good workmanship, they remain rudimentary in structure. This is immediately noticeable, and all the fascination that the patient discovery of hidden shapes could have aroused has completely vanished. What remains is a skillful, yet superficial decoration. Similarly, Synthetic enamel is used today, which produces very stable results and no surprises. The colors are varied, smooth and uniform. Long gone are the days of the irregularities in old ceramics and the unevenness of natural pigments. mystical traditions found a music and poetry. Architecture and decoration have lost all influence of Sufism. And so the Zalij have lost part of their soul. They have become purely decorative features, works of pure technical skill. The pieces used are minuscule, scarcely bigger than your fingertips. Each one of these little baskets represents several days' work for a craftsman. Each basket contains pieces of the same shape, size, and color. The assembler can pick and choose from the baskets to obtain a given pattern. In the Sufi 
tradition of Muslim mystics, only a limited number of colors were used, and always with symbolic meaning. A first group of three colors, white, black, and sandalwood brown, which are the symbolic colors of the spirit, and a second group of four colors symbolizing the elements and their red for fire, dry and hot, saffron yellow for air, moist and hot, blue for earth, dry and cold, and finally green for water, moist and cold. There are a great many different patterns, ranging from the simplest to the most complex, and these patterns are found in the traditional palaces and mosques of Fez. The leaves are used to decorate the floor and keep the area fresh and cool. away, exploring the lines, shapes, and surface. The bottoms of the walls are covered with zilesias. They protect the foundations. The rest of the surfaces are made of cut stucco, like carved plaster that is generally left a natural white color, but can also be painted in the same tones as the zilesias. The demographics of some of these zilege are extremely complicated and evoke initiatory paths. They are graphic games as much as mind games. The Andalusians were limited to a formal chromatic language in that they used the symbolic colors of Islam. Green, blue, saffron, white, black, and also a deep brown. Each color holds some meaning. The design can be read as a positive or negative image, for the balance of solid color and blank space is such that the white surfaces speak as much as surfaces. Often, verses of the Quran are also engraved in long, curving calligraphy, a fluidity that contrasts with the straight lines of the stucco and zilesias. Often, verses of the Quran are also engraved in long, curving calligraphy, a fluidity that contrasts with the straight line of stucco and zilesias. The window areas are covered with turned or carved wood lattices called musharabis. They provide the interior with light and air and shade it from rays of the sun. They make the light dance on the walls and move throughout the day like magical sundials. In the 12th century, the kingdoms in northern Spain embarked on a crusade to take the south of the peninsula back from the Muslims. The level of cultural and scientific development of the Arabo Muslims was far beyond that of their conquerors. The application of the Arabo Muslim style in the newly conquered territories was referred to as Mozarabic. Around 1330, Peter the Cruel had a magnificent palace built by Muslims on the site of an Arabic palace in Seville. This refined architecture is indistinguishable from that of the Arabic palaces of the time. 